tug team in the house. What's up, y'all? Oh, man. You guys ever play tug of war? When I was small and young, I, they would play it in gym class, and I hated it. I love tug of war. Uh, yeah, because you were, were you ever the anchor? Hello, <laughs> trust in the anchor, Baba. <laughs> I loved it. You know, you're trying to pull and fight and make progress and yeah. beat the team. They just put me somewhere randomly in the line where it did not affect much change <laughs> in the outcome of the game because you can't be at the front if you're not like scrappy and you can't be at the back if you're not like strong and mighty. And so I was just... You were just in the middle trying to not fall down. Yes. I was just like, well, go back with everyone. Okay, hold on. Don't let go. I don't know. Don't Dude, fall over. Tug of more. Yes. It's a conversation between two friends. Two friends. Where we talk about that idea of like in life, you're on the rope of success, That's trying right. with all your might to pull and your hands are sore and your legs are tired. It's true. You're trying to pull into everything that God has for you. Yes. You're trusting. I'm Whitney. We're oh, yeah. just two friends. We that's work true. together in ministry and we hang out in life and uh, that's our context. And so the Bible is kind of our roadmap. And so we talk about that a lot, but we're here to help people step into all that they're created to be. That's true. Yeah. And so we have quite the catalog That's true. of conversations that we've had. All the and things. so check us out, like, tag, comment, subscribe. share, follow, subscribe. Dude, sorry that we just told you seven things to do. Yeah, but do them anyway. If you're new, you don't even know us yet. You're like, no. No, do it. And I think it'll I think it'll be glad. I wonder you did. how many people, there's probably analytics on this, of the number of people that watch and listen compared to the number of people that are actually subscribed. It's probably sad. Yeah. Easton can tell us. Easton can he tell can us. look it up right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you subscribe, what's cool is first thing in the morning, it tells you that the podcast is out and you can just click on it and you don't even got to go look it up. Come on, put us on the algorithm, baby. Do it. You need some good stuff in the algorithm. That's right. We That's talked about that last week. If you missed it, go back and check it yeah. out. Uh, man, we just had here at the church. Yes. Uh, we had a super fun event yeah. for New Year's. So this year, the calendar jacked pastor's around the globe because <laughs> Christmas day was on a Sunday. That's right. Ain't nobody coming to church on Sunday. I don't right. think if it's like I'm going to open presents or I'm going to go to church. Right. And then the next week, January one was right. on a Sunday yep. and everybody out at the country club getting crunkety crunk. Right. Or over a fat daddy's here in Mansfield. Fat daddy's? Oh my God. We drove by dude. It was so packed. Was there packed? And so like, we thought, well, instead of trying to get our volunteers and teams yeah. and everybody together, we'll do something a little unique on Sunday. Yeah. So we did a broadcast the night before online, and then we did a brunch on that Sunday at 11. So we have two service times, 9, 15 and 11. And so we took that second service time and made it our brunch time. Come on. 11 is a great time to yeah. do a brunch. It was phenomenal. What was great for you and I yeah. is that we did nothing. Now, we didn't do nothing, nothing. I bought muffins and tortillas. I was going to say, you brought muffins and tortillas. I made my grandma's uh, wedding punch as the mormosas that we had for the event, which was fun. Uh, that means... Uh, it that was, means they put them in these tiny cups and you could barely even get a full swig out of it. Yeah, we finally went and got some larger cups, but it was fun. <laughs> it was and delicioso. So for minimal effort on our part... Our team did a great job, a great effort. Shout out to Brady and uh, Enrique who really helped lead the like, and Amanda who helped lead the like team to get it going. But we, we did not have to give a whole lot of effort. We have an incredible chef team. I don't know how many churches have a chef team, but oh. we have a chef team because we are a unique uh -huh. uh, body of people uh -huh. and we love them. We're super grateful for them, led by John and Anna Waterfield. And Legit chef team. They got their own aprons, like, multiple grills. These dudes, we had an event for uh, Legends of More, which is our like 55 and up ministry. And they had eight different people cook brisket and had a brisket contest. It's amazing. Brisket contest. Right, right, right. So much, so much food. People were taking home plates. Oh, it was amazing. It's amazing. And so like you had... Uh, a kitchen in the church you were at growing up and they made like Wednesday night dinners or anything? Well, I grew, the church I was really young at, Fahola, or uh, Riverside Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a basement in Michigan with a giant kitchen and fellowship hall. Dude, so much food. Ladies yeah. be bringing in casseroles. They had like yeah. five ovens in I there. I think that's what I love is the contracts because the church I grew up in, we had Wednesday night dinners, but it was all the cute, sweet, little old ladies of the church who made the meals and then like like they made the meals for my wedding because yeah. they're so wonderful and sweet but this is like manly men and like strong women who love to like not just bake and and like it's not sweet dainty no it is like we had chicken and waffles i think that gordon ramsay would be impressed with us 
Uh, um, he would yell and probably curse at us a little that bit. That would be the greatest. How can I get Gordon Ramsay to come for a sermon it's series? Exactly. I got so excited thinking about it. <laughs> I'm like, this would be amazing. But they're amazing. They do an incredible job. So, and so uh, we, uh, they did chicken and waffles. And a bacon and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. But then we just told the church, just bring your just favorite bring stuff. Just bring your jam, whatever you want. There was so, so much food. I literally posted a picture and said, don't judge. It's a holiday. Because my plate was like this. Which that's how I always roll if I get a buffet. I don't. I just get three plates. Oh, yeah. No, I get it all in one and it all touches each no, it's other. it's disgusting. Gross. I know. But I got so excited. Ashley Ray, these It all touches rolls. itself in your stomach. That's right. But that's after my tongue. <laughs> Give me more than one plate. That's I don't want true. a mountain of garbage. Did you have the cinnamon roll? What's my name? Yeah. I had, was it Ashley Ray Cinnamon Ashley Roll? Ashley Ray Cinnamon Roll, so good. It's so gooey. It was like Pioneer Woman or something. I don't know what a recipe is, but it was amazing. What is Pioneer Woman? She's some, I don't is know, that, she's some woman on is the Pioneer. That, uh, <laughs> is that, what's her name, Dr. Quinn? <laughs> no, but I don't know her. What's Shout her out name? to Dr. Quinn, what's up? I almost Dr. said Quinn Rachel and Ray, and I know that's not right either. I don't know <laughs> it's a banger. I don't know her name, but uh, it was really good. So... Let's talk about how... But we had so many people yes, come to this part. event. Keep going. <laughs> we had so many people come to this event that was non-spiritual. Yeah. I prayed for Except the food. it was extremely spiritual. I prayed for the food. I went like this. Just the people standing around me. Hey, hey, we're going to pray for the food. And then I prayed for the food and said amen. And maybe 15 out of... I don't know how many people were there. A ton of people were there. Yeah. Heard me pray. And then we just and ate. And we ate. And it was wonderful. And the we people, got to connect with so many people they made that we friends. normally wouldn't get to talk to on a Sunday, which was my favorite thing. And with us not having church at this building. So we yeah. had the event at our North Campus. Yeah, yeah, Where we have youth and office out of and all the things. Yeah. And so I met 50 people. Right. That had never even been to this campus. But oh, come true. to more church. Yeah, yeah, Call yeah. their home. They're involved. But they just, for some reason, haven't ever have been to a midweek thing. Yeah. And so it was super cool to kind of have a front door. Yeah. I mean, for them hundreds of, uh, the majority of them have already been here. Yeah. But yeah, it was great. It was super uh, fun. Just for our information. Oh, yeah. Easton has sent me the information that um, in just like the last month from all the watch time hours combined, 54% of the people who watched were subscribed and 45% we're not subscribed. Come on, 45. And so I'm like, Pick come it up. on, you're, you're half of the people, essentially. And if you're not subscribed, why not? That's still Hey, 45, there's more. That's right. There's more. Jump on that 45 and that 55. Change the algorithm in your feed by subscribing. I promise it'll help. So that was a, that was a ton of fun. Yeah, super fun. Okay, so uh, we have all kinds of topics that we talk about here on the Tug of More. Yeah. And so today, as oh. we've been talking about hanging out with people, connecting to people, making relationships... Because we did that at the brunch. What are we talking about today? Well, so we, we ask you guys to send questions. Yeah. And so we've got the same question in a couple different packages. Ways, yeah. From people. And so essentially the question, I don't want to read them. Yeah. Because no. they're long and a bunch of details. No, just, yeah. But essentially. essentially the question is this. I'm on staff at a church. Yeah. Or I lead an organization. Yeah. And there are people within our staff that don't talk to each other. Right. What do I do? How do I make them talk? And so there's a couple, the there's a couple different angles yeah. of like, I'm the youth pastor and the kids pastor's mad at me. And so we never talk to each other. I'm the worship pastor and the worship and the senior pastor's wife used to sing and now she right. doesn't. And so me and the senior pastor that we literally don't talk to each other. And so there's like, it's essentially a question of offense. I'm offended. Someone's offended. And so there's these people that work together in the church but yet there's broken conversation yeah. or relationally just like broken dynamics of like, uh, they just like their spouse and somebody else's spouse don't really get along. Yeah. So then therefore they don't get along. Like they're they're You're right. They're all based in offense, but it's all these like different Wow, they won't talk to each other or this is just the way it's always been. Like yeah. you grew up in a place where, uh, or you worked in a place where like this department and this department just never got along. So right. it wasn't necessarily about the people dynamic, but it was just, there the, were feuds. There were these feuds of these departments that even when the staff changed, uh, the feud never changed. It was still there. Weird. And so isn't that a weird thing? Yeah. But we have gotten this question a bunch of different ways and started talking about it and really realized, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you're on a church staff team, whether you are a, a boss or an employee of another organization, or whether you're a parent in a home, whether you are a, a sibling in a home, like any where you are, there's relational dynamics around you. Yeah. And so we thought we really should unpack this converse, in a conversation because it's a great question. I've been at churches where staff 
people refuse to talk to each other. Yeah. Like if one person's walking down the hall, the other person will duck into an office or turn around and like petty, awkward junior high, like literally won't communicate. And I always thought, why doesn't somebody deal with this? Right. Well, because then they'd have to deal with it. (laughs) And so if you, that's up to the leader. Yeah. If the leader knows that that's the leader, if the leader knows that that's happening, isn't doing anything, I'm sorry. Right. And so what do you do? I don't know. Go and talk to them and ask them why they aren't doing anything about it. Well, I think there's two things. I think that's, that's it. But I think the other part is, um, we, our team, for us, our team dynamic, they work really well in the peer accountability of like, Hey man, what's going on? Hey, I noticed that like, if it's, if you're connected to it, then it's easy. I mean, that's biblical to like go to somebody and say, Hey, is there an offense? Is there something that I've done? Or, Hey, I'm kind of frustrated. I want to talk about it. Like, don't just, uh, let it fester and don't talk about it to other people. Go deal with it. But then, um, you do have a relational, I think responsibility. If you are friends with one, cause I've been in situations before where, I was connected to this person and I was connected to this person, Yeah. but these people were not connected to each other. Right. And I was always so confused by it because I'm like, you're a great person. You're a great person. Why are we not greatly connected to each other? But we do have a responsibility, I think, at a certain point to be like, hey, uh, let's try to make change. Now, if you're not the boss, they don't have to listen to you and right. they don't have to do it. But you can allow yourself the opportunity with grace and with love and a uh, love sandwich of like, hey, we're all awesome. And I just noticed this dynamic, but let's talk about it and see if they can fix it. But yeah, it's not always up to us. But well, I ta- appreciate ta- in our team that they help hold each other accountable. Well, it, ta- it takes two to tango, right? Right. Like it takes two people. So if there's two people that are refusing to talk and neither of them has ever came and dealt with the drama, yeah. it's both of their faults. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so like if you're at a place and you've got somebody that you have tension with and y'all don't talk and they're but you haven't went to them and said, hey, can we get coffee? Right. Hey, I'm sorry if there's something that I did that and I know I messed up here. And dude, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. there to be this awkwardness, tension. I'm sorry. We did the whole uh, say I'm sorry first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like link it, tag it, yeah. watch it. If you haven't done that, then you're equal to blame for the drama. Right. So maybe we need to expand the conversation just from staff that doesn't talk to just inner staff drama yeah or just like like interpersonal yeah tension that is like exists because it can be for a number of reasons it can be because somebody sent a text message and i misread the way your intention was behind a text message it can be because there's yeah a long-standing feud and somebody else said to me well that's just the way that department's always been and so now i'm just offended or I have the opportunity to address something head on and to go, hey, I got this text. It kind of confused me. Could you talk about it? Or, hey, I've heard there's been tension in this area before, but I'm new to this department and I just want to get along. What you're saying is like, we can only, we're only responsible for what we're responsible for ourselves. And all we can do is go and try to make change. And so um, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, like, what are, what is our part in this conversation, yeah. in this where can I affect change? How can I help it? I don't know. What? Um, you have something to say? I think that, no, I think that for, and, and I know that we talk church because that's our context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that in every business or in every church, there's a certain reason that there would be tension. Yeah. So like creative. Creative generally feels underappreciated, overtasked, mm-hmm. and like everybody is their boss. Right. Like, Everybody right? is, is coming to feel? them. Like <laughs> every like, everybody's coming to them. I need a asking graphic. Something. I need a video. Can you edit this thing? Right. And so that's the tension they feel. Kids right. feels on an island. Yep. Because they're not in the main room. They're in another portion of the building. Unseen. Unseen. Youth feels like they always got drama. There's always problems. There's yeah. always fights. And the budget's not big enough. And there can be this like we have our own church inside the church. Right. Um, finance. Finance can feel like the bad guy, the jerk. Yeah. Like they have, like they're the non fun. Yeah. They don't see the, they don't get the vision. I think that for a lot of adult ministries, it can, they can feel like they're just, there's this battle of is what I'm doing ministry. 
Oh yeah, there's that. There's, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. there's a lot of hidden behind the scenes administration yeah. needs. Yeah. Or there's a lot of punches that you take yeah. okay. on the on the adult yeah. side. Yeah. And so what happens is, is in a in a ministry context is you get all these different personalities and all these different stressors involved, and it and the devil wants to come in and bring division. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. Right. And so what he wants to do is he wants to get the kids and the finance people frustrated with each other. Yeah. Kids goes over budget all the time. Well, right. The finance people, they don't give enough money. They always got a bad attitude. <laughs> now there's a crack. Right. Now there's a wedge being driven in a church and uh, and everybody goes to the Christmas party but hates being there. Ugh. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Yeah. I've been to church Christmas parties that 50% of the room doesn't want to be there. Right, right. And the other half is either oblivious or pretending like everything's okay. Right, right. No, I think that uh, there's so many, again, you're talking about perspective. There's so many perspectives of like for creative team, for different departments where you can go, hey, they don't they don't see what I do. They, they don't, don't get see it. my value. They don't get and understand where I'm coming from. And what I want to say back to them is, right, well, have you talked to them about it? Because, yeah. um, they are not going to understand your point of view unless you've shared it with them. And yeah. so a lo I deal with a lot of conflict conversations because that's part of the job that I get to do. And I actually uh, did not start. Somebody asked me the other day, like, how are, how are you so the conflict queen? And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I did not start the conflict queen. I did not want to engage in conflict. That is not fun yeah. to me. But yet I've learned that how it can, needed it is it's this? so needed and, and it can become the thing that actually brings change, healing, freedom, all the things that I'm um, just learned to embrace what's necessary. And so, um, yeah, I think that the biggest question I ask most often to people when they're having conflict with someone else is, well, have you talked to them about it? And yeah. I think so often we're just afraid to, we're afraid. Uh, but that to me is the one that, that, that piece is what then I think bleeds over into every piece of life. Yeah. I think in our homes, there's times where we have conflict that is underlying and is boiling under the surface or in our families. Maybe it's not the home we live in, but maybe it's with our ad adult parents that, you know, we don't live in their home anymore. Or maybe it's with a sibling or aunt or uncle or somebody that it's like, we have this underlying tension. Well, it's just been there and it just exists and we just don't get along. Well, we haven't talked in however many years and it's like, but why, what, yeah. what, but it's that we're afraid to have that initial conversation of just like, Hey, can we talk about this? And maybe it's due to, trauma in the past where we've had people that when they responded to us, they did not respond kindly. Have you ever gotten like a conversation with someone you were working with yeah. and then it quickly escalates yeah. to either yelling or to name calling or, or shut to down, shut down or, or blaming. To blaming. Yep. And like finger pointing. And so I'm like, um, I think we can look at our past experiences and that it keeps us from stepping into a new season and being willing to have a confrontation or a conversation of conflict that we're afraid it's going to be like it was. And so we don't allow it to come into now. And yeah. that just shuts everything down yeah. in our homes. What you said, the enemy is very real and division is the, is the biggest tool and tactic I think that is used in every relationship in every area of life to try to make us all be isolated. Well, because if he can divide you from other people, yeah. then that leaves you alone. Right. And if you're alone, you're easily conquered. Absolutely. And so that's why all this division comes in and attacks the church. Yeah. And what you're saying is true that we just have to talk about it. Right. That sitting around being bent out of shape. Can you believe what they said? Right. I can't that's doing no good. Yeah. That's making zero progress. Well, we just talked about it not long ago. Gossip is talking about it in circles where change cannot be affected. Right. You cannot actually make change in the circumstance. You're just talking about it in places with people that uh, have no control over it yeah. and are not the people you're in conflict with. The opposite of gossip is actual confrontation conversation yeah. of like, hey, can we talk about this? And it might feel drama. It might feel dramatic to do it, but that's where you're trying to make change. And it's not easy, but it's valuable. You got to weed that stuff out. You got to do it. I think that what can be what I've experienced in these kind of situations is sometimes people like to talk about stuff at a bunch of different tables. Mm. How do I explain this well? Yeah. So like they want to get you want to get. So like a, if if I have a drama with wit, uh -huh. if I'm offended at you, what I could do 
is I could talk to Rachel about it. Yeah. And I could just with her and then I could talk to Enrique about it. Yeah. Right. Right. Then I could talk to Amanda or Tim about it. Right. All these separate tables, but never talk to you about it. Right. But what we need to do is we need to pull everybody into the same room and in the same conversation. Right. Or maybe if not, if I have an issue with you, if I know that you have an, if I know that you and Amanda have a problem with each other. Yeah. I don't just need to go to Amanda and say, well, you know, Whitney, she's stressed out and, you know, blah, and, and, you know, wit, you know, man, what I need to do is pull both parties together right. and say, Hey, what, what's going on? But I think that what we try to do is we don't like that awkward, we're going to call a meeting. Right. Yeah. I don't think I'm explaining it very well. No, I think it's that, but you also, what you said is the reason why I think we do the different table conversations is we're trying to build up a, uh, not a defense, but like a uh, allies. We're yeah. trying to form a group of allies before we go to that person so that we can then say, all of them, all of them agree with me. And the truth of the matter is you don't need all these people to agree with you. Anytime somebody says to me, a bunch of people are saying, I say, who, who are, are they? they? <laughs> What's their names? Who are the bunch? Oh, it's your mom that thinks that. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Your mom's on your side. Your mom thought you were a good dancer when you can't dance when you're a kid. Like, <laughs> Your mom's just on your side. Yeah. I don't care what your mom thinks. Right. Yeah. No. And, and so I think we do that to build up the courage to then go and have the conversation yeah. because it's not easy. It's not comfortable. I've shared it before that like there have been times in my life where I've had to look myself in the mirror and be like, that's who I had to talk to. I wanted to talk to this person and I yeah. had to talk to you about it already yeah. and I got to go talk about it with him and oh my word. And so I had, who I had to talk to to get myself to go in the room and do it was myself and to say, hey, self, this is what you're called to do. Get your butt out there and go do it and handle it. And sometimes uh, we don't want to do that. We want to have a bunch of other people tell us we're right and that, and that oh, yeah, you definitely are. They're wrong. And all it build up this, like, what is the word I'm trying to, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with a word that I can't. But, like, build up this, yeah. A, a group of allies who will go with us and be like, yes, we're on their Trying side. Trying to build up an armory. Yeah. 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 Of people that are like with us and in it so that we feel like we're more right. And the truth of the matter is relationships are less about being right as they are about bringing clarity yeah. and like understanding. And the, the place to do that is not necessarily your weekly staff meeting. Oh, absolutely not. So I think that people allow chaos to live because they just don't know where to do it. Yeah. And so like if a conversation needs to happen, yeah. like if you're on staff at a church and there's two pastors that refuse to talk first, if you're not the lead pastor, talk to the lead pastor. Yeah, for sure. Here's what's going on. I think this needs or to be dealt with. whoever is the direct reports of that. Right. On like I think that whoever the direct, chart yeah, works. direct reports better than lead pastor. Yeah. Whoever, whoever the, the direct report is needs to be pulled in in, in the conversation. And if they're unwilling to deal with it or they give you the responsibility right. of dealing with it, then you need to just get both of those people to say, Hey, can we meet at coffee? Right. We, I want to schedule a specific meeting to talk about this thing and then rip the bandaid off. Yeah. At least is my approach. Yeah, No, talk about that. I think that's important. My approach is I don't ever want people to have to walk away thinking. What does he think? Right. If you work for me, you know what the junk I think. Yeah. Cause I'm real clear and I work real hard to tell what I'm, what I'm thinking and feeling. You say all the words, even the last 10%. Say all the last words, say all the words. And so call the conversation, say, Hey y'all, it feels like there's some tension. There's some awkwardness that I've just really been feeling like, I don't know if you're offended or you're offended or whatever, but I just wanted to open it up. And so let's get some dialogue so there can be some healing. Yeah. And like, you're going to see real quickly who, uh, wants to heal and who doesn't want to heal. Yeah. There's a story in the Bible. Uh, dude, it's so good. So, uh, Sol was it Solomon? There's a lady. Baby? Yeah. Okay. There's a lady. Was it Solomon? Yeah. Okay. There's a lady who uh, had a baby. There's two ladies who they lived. They both had babies. There's two ladies. They both had babies and they lived together. And one of them in the middle of the night rolled over on top of her baby and suffocated her baby and the baby died, which is super sad. Yeah. And so then that lady whose baby died woke up in the middle of the night went over and stole the baby from her friend whose baby wasn't dead and then put her dead baby in her yeah. bed. Well, the lady wakes up and she's like, this isn't my baby. Right. This is your baby and yeah. you've stolen my baby. And the lady, the, the lady who had the dead baby refused to admit that it, yeah. admit that it happened. 
And this is before Maury Povich, so there was no. Yeah, this you're is before the mama, DNA and all father. that. Right. <laughs> and so they, the the issue gets brought to the king. Is it Solomon? Yeah, it's Solomon. I know oh, it is. Okay. It has to be Solomon. And so right? brings it up, oh brings God. it up, goes to the king, tells the story, and the king says this. Okay, I know we're going to solve this. He says, give me the baby and give me a sword. And he says, what we're going to do is we're going to cut yeah, the baby. Solomon. Ba- it's Solomon? Yeah. He says, we're going to cut the baby in half and then each of you get half of a baby. And the one lady says, okay, good idea. Let's do that. And the other lady starts crying. She says, no, don't do that. She can have the baby. And Solomon in that moment knew who was right, right. and who was wrong. Right. In this moment of tension. Right. In this moment of real... I mean, can you imagine the king with an infant and a sword in his hand? Right. Like, that's the ugliest... Right. He looks... Crazy. He looks so ugly and right. so mean in this moment. But he has he's doing it for a purpose. He has so much wisdom. Solomon, not for one second, was going to kill that baby. No. But he's doing it to get to the truth. Right. What I'm saying is you call that meeting... And you're holding the baby and a sword in your hand, and you're going to see where the issue is. Absolutely. Because if one person in that meeting says, you know what, I'm really sorry. Man, I've screwed this up, or I hate that our relationship was broken. I want to get to the bottom of this. But one person is staunch and frustrated and angry and only pointing. You know which one's deceitful. Right. You know which one isn't loving. Right. That mom, the real mom of the baby, would rather her baby live with this other woman and survive then be killed. Absolutely. But the one lady just wants to burn it all down. Yeah. And that's what happens a lot of times in these situations. Absolutely. Is there somebody who's just unwilling to forgive? Yeah. Absolutely. I think so. They, they, and because of that, they just want to let, you know, we talk about hurt people, hurt people Mm -hmm. and like bitter people just want their bitterness to like spread. They don't want, uh, peace and joy and love. And then sometimes it's just a simple misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. There are times when yeah. uh, people have Stuff conversation get yeah. and things get, wires get crossed or situations. And, and I think also uh, the world we live in is not as good at confrontation as it used to be. Now we have so many screens and so many uh, devices mm-hmm. and we can type and we have like, what are they called? Keyboard courage. Keyboard, yeah. Keyboard courage. And they, they get behind their keyboard and they, they'll talk that way, but they won't talk face to face. And so what I they'll found, send an email with all the CCs. Yeah. And all the all caps letters or yeah. words like, but, but, um, and so for some people it's just, oh, I haven't been good at it. And so maybe they'll both cry and maybe they'll both be sorry. And that's great. But then in that moment we can help teach what it looks like to have conversation. But often we find that one person is, yeah, defiant to peace and to resolution. And if you don't want peace and resolution, then you don't have the right heart to be in ministry anyway. <laughs> I want to sit more I want to sit more comfortable in this chair. Well, I was just thinking I was trying to look at you, so that's why I was like, let me just turn. Ugh. Or turn your chair. I don't know. So this does not feel comfortable at all. Well, no, yeah, it does. No, no. Okay. Good. Okay. So, um, in the church world. Yeah. Well, no, no, let's do this. Whitney's husband, Aaron. Yeah. Works, uh, for the city of Fort Worth. Yeah. And he is aviation director. Yeah. Rachel for years was a public school teacher. Yeah. My opinion did nothing for Rachel's job. Correct. Whitney could hate the yeah. dude over garbage department in right. Fort Worth. Right. And it would not affect the day-to-day of your husband. No, right. But in the church world, yeah. we do this weird thing yeah. where we all live life together yeah. and we all get together all the time and our kids all go to camp together. Right. And like there's we all of this, Jesus together. there's all this relational, relational crossover. Re- yeah. You only have to see Aaron's coworkers a couple times a year. Correct. But Aaron sees your coworkers multiple times a week. Multiple times a week. And right. so there's this different tension in ministry. Yeah. Because a spouse can blow up the whole spot. That's true. The spouse. I've been at, at churches where there's a pastor on staff and his wife won't even attend the church. Right. Because of something that happened interdepartmentally or somebody else's wife and there's wives or husbands that get frustrated or bent out of shape at each other. 
Do you remember? And just, it never gets just dealt like with. Just like a year ago, we went to this conference and you saw a friend that you had known years ago and you hadn't seen his wife in years. And you said, oh, is your wife uh, going to be here? She was one of Rachel's old like she tried to date me from, from college. And you were like, is she going to be here? And he was like, oh, no, she don't do that. Yeah. And I was like, what does he mean she don't do that? And like, that's what was the dynamic was like, she, that is not her thing. She does the kids and she does, but she, for whatever reason, something has happened. I have no idea over a series of life and circumstances. There's now this like part of her heart that's like closed off to showing up for, uh, those kind of things. And it's heartbreaking because it's like somewhere along the line, something happened and it didn't get solved correctly what does your face mean i'm laughing at easton oh okay why <laughs> go uh uh yeah i don't know i it's tough because rachel has never been like that no right rachel's our whole marriage has been all in and now she's been frustrated with people on church staffs when i wasn't the lead pastor yeah, yeah, yeah but not to the point that she wouldn't talk to them right or wouldn't go right and it's uh, just heartbreaking because it it can really uh, it can really cause a relational rift for all kinds of people. Yeah. And so to me, I'm like, no. So what should they do? Yeah, something's got to give. What do we do? What do oh. we do if who should we use? Let's use Cassandra. Okay. Can I use Cassandra? Yeah, because she's she the would best. never do that, right? <laughs> if Cassandra started acting straight crazy, right. That's going to affect a lot of stuff yeah. for Enrique. Yeah. So what what would we do to deal with that? Oh, I well, I would just go talk to Cassandra and right. be like, "Hey, I've noticed you're not acting like yourself." Yeah. Or hey, I've noticed that you're frustrated. Or hey, I've noticed that you stopped showing up. Yeah. And and you and I again say sorry first is a huge piece of who we are. That I would be like, "Is there something I've done yeah. that's upset you and caused you to not want to be a part of this anymore?" Yeah. And then from there, unpack and figure out. Uh, what it is. Yeah. And I think the other part is there are awkward pauses in conversation. <laughs> so what's hmm. going to happen mm -hmm. is that she's going to say, no, everything's fine. Or, oh, really weird. I'm not trying to. And, and what can happen is in these moments, or she can say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I will do better to show up in a better way. And that's <laughs> not solving anything. Yeah. That's not real. And so what I've push. had to learn is the push. Which you got to pick hate. up the you got to pick up the sore and the baby. Yeah. And I've had to be willing to say, yeah, I don't think that's what it, I don't think that's all there is. Yeah. Or it feels like you're shutting down. It doesn't feel like you're actually, and like that feels intrusive or that feels hard or that feels frustrating and they might cry and they might, but the truth is the reason why I push is not because I'm a punk is because I love them and because yeah. I want God's best for them. And, and we see her gifts and all that God has yeah. for her. And we don't want that to be deleted Absolutely. by something that happened. And so if somebody's already married to somebody and they just be acting crazy, somebody's got to go talk to them about it. And then what would be from there is if she was unwilling to talk about it, which is not what would happen. No, uh, this, no, this we're way. using Cassandra because she's the best example. Yeah. But I would then be like, okay, let's talk about it with Enrique too. Let's both come in. Let's both have a conversation because are we all feeling this? What's going on? Because if Cassandra had so much offense in her heart against the church, yeah, eventually that's going to lead to Enrique yeah. leaving. Yeah. And being frustrated and his influence infiltrating into other people and right. them having frustration and offense. And so as pastors, we're pastoring the whole family. Yeah. Like destiny yeah. is our executive admin. Yeah. We love destiny. Yeah. And Mason, her husband right. is super involved and engaged with the church. Yeah. And in the same way that if Mason started getting mad right. and frustrated and refused to Talk be to, a part of things or if, come around. If, if Mason said, I'm never going to, I hate Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Pastor Tim. Yeah. I hate Pastor Tim. I'm not going to talk to him anymore. And I'm going to kick Jude. That's Tim's kid. <laughs> I'm going to kick him. <laughs> when I see it, then what would happen is we would have to have a conversation with yeah. Mason. And there would be a decision right. of like, dude, hey, what's going what's on? Going like, on? what? Maybe Tim did something stupid we don't know about. We got to yeah. go talk to Tim. I'm saying like for us in our church yeah, and how yeah. we lead, we don't let that stuff live. No, that's what I was going to say. It does, it's not allowed. Is it's what not we allowed. Say. We're going to allowed. We're going to deal with it and get over it. Yeah. And if that means that there's a bunch of talking or praying or crying or people going to counseling and right. say we give it a timeline of okay, we well, all got three months to deal with this. Yeah. 
Well, I think one of the biggest critiques... But a lot of people don't deal with it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think one of the biggest critiques you and I have received as uh, leaders from other leaders or other people is just that we are uh, confrontational. We say we're not uh, passive aggressive, we're directly aggressive. Or, uh, man, y'all just like, man, y'all just handling things over there. We'll hear phrases all the time. Or that it's drama or that, uh, yeah, these kind of things. Well, the truth is... Well, people that call handling stuff drama are just immature. Well, yeah, the truth is... Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> There's a lot of words on a t-shirt, but it could be a, you know, it could be a slide on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, the truth is the reason we do that is because it's biblical. Yeah. Is because the Bible is very clear. Jesus gives very direct. Handle dissension amongst br- brethren. Yeah. He gives very direct, uh, understanding I, I referenced Matthew 18 before but it's very clear to go to somebody when you have an offense and then what you what you don't do it says like if they will not if it doesn't get handled then you got to go get more people bring to the government you, you have to read Matthew 18 because I'm not doing a good job quoting it yeah. but and then eventually you have to recognize that they're to be treated like the pagans which means uh they're you they're if, not in leadership they're not in leadership anymore they're not trusted they're to be not an elder. trustworthy to be able if they can't handle the conversation of the conflict because inevitably there's going to be conflict you and i have different opinions we have different yeah. ways that we've grown up different thoughts you're watching uh pizza and like car YouTube. Yeah. I'm watching murder mystery shows. Like yeah. these are. We're, what is? Your I'm laughing. Brain? I'm laughing your because brain? another question we get all the time that's not really a whole episode is, yeah, but do you and Whitney ever fight? Oh golly. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know if we fight. No. But, but we, we said this to each other the other day. You and I were talking about that, and we had we just, disagree all the time. Like day, like on the daily. Yeah. But there's so much space between us to go. No, I don't want to agree. Why? Because this. Oh, that. And you change my mind all the time, and I change your mind all the time. And sometimes we just still don't agree. Well, I don't know if we change each other's mind. I think that I go from 100% my opinion, 100% your opinion, and then we end up at like 60% your yeah, opinion yeah, yeah. and 40% mine, which gives us a better outcome of how we're going to handle it. Right, 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 right. But we disagree on lots of stuff. All the time, on lots of things. There's lots of, so it's not like Trust and Whitney just live in some friendship utopia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You don't like, right. like, no, because it's the, not that the other day you said, I don't know. They got now to... me and Aaron agree all the time. Okay. And with this one, That's we got to, right. yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying the other day we were talking about it. You said there, you know, they were really this, this certain group that we were talking about the dynamic of it. You were like their conflict. There's this conflict struggle between them and they're not really sure how to handle it. And you were like, I, I don't really know how to help them. And I was like, Hey, five minutes ago, you and I just had a conflict equally to the level of their conflict, yeah. they're just afraid to handle the conflict because yeah. you and I don't even remember what had happened, but you said something and I was like, oh, I don't think it's that. And you're like, you don't? And and I was like, no. And and then uh, you said, well, I don't think it's that. And I was like, oh, well, okay, but I think that, and like, but we just have it part of conversation because the truth of the matter is, uh, again, Jesus calls us to try to bring ourselves to resolution yeah. so that we can affect change in the kingdom of God. Not so that I can be right. I don't give you my opinion so that I can be right. Yeah. And you don't give me your opinion so that you can be right. We're giving each other our opinion, what you said, so that the best possible outcome can be what we decide and what's determined for the people, for the organization, if, honestly, for the kingdom of God. And so now he's writing something now. No, so I'm searching, I'm searching oh, for a verse. He's searching for a Bible verse. Uh, and so I think that's the piece. Again, we're not having conflict to be right. We're having conflict to bring resolution and peace and understanding so that, uh, we can better help those around us because people know when there's undealt with conflict 100%. and that that just affects everyone. Yeah. Okay, go. What's your verse? Matthew 5, 23 and 24. If you're offering your gift at the altar. Oh, yeah. That's so you're, you're, you're giving your offering. Right. You're, you're being bringing holy. a gift you're to God. You're doing the thing God's asked you to do. Yeah. And there, where? Giving your offering. And there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Right. There's some drama. Someone's mad. Someone's frustrated. Somebody's been on a shape. Leave your gift there in yeah. front of the altar. Don't even give it yet. Mm-hmm. Drop your donkey there, right. leave your sheep there, go first and be reconciled to them. Mm-hmm. Then come and offer your gift. Another translation, go and be reconciled to that person. Right. And I think so many times in church we're disobedient to that. Oh yeah. We tithe, we sing, 
we preach, we smile. Don't cuss. We don't get tattoos. But we, but, but we secretly <laughs> right, right, hate somebody on the other side of the auditorium. Come on, right. And so the reason we're having this conversation is really because of that verse. Yeah. Don't be reconciled to yeah. one another. Go, go and deal with it. Like, right. first of all, it's no fun to work at a church when you hate somebody who works there no. or been in a shape all the time if somebody works there. You have to have the conversation. Yeah. And the reconciliation piece is what you've talked about before. That well, that's Matthew 18. That's the, yeah. that's the yeah. go Read through Matthew the steps. 18, if you don't know how to do it, that's how you do it. But, but then what the ba- what the end of that says is like the only half of the reconciliation is on you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we have to recon- recognize that reconciliation is not possible with certain people um, because they're unwilling to have that. But because what I hear sometimes from different staff members who want to have a conflict conversation is, well, what if they get mad at me? Or what if they're really upset with me afterward? And that's a possibility. Yeah. But we have to be willing to decide the reconciliation opportunity is more important than somebody just being been out of shape for a little bit. And and the truth is, if we handle it correctly, if we handle it according to the way God's asked us to, uh, then if they're unwilling to be reconciled to, that's on them. That's not on you. And this, this truth is not only true for staff positions, right. but it will trickle down to the culture of a church. Absolutely. Because it could be easy, like uh, like just this week, we had a, uh, or we've had a bunch of youth events, mm-hmm. and then we have a Legends of More 55 and Up mm-hmm. event. Yeah. And so essentially what happens is our student ministry uh, trashes the kitchen. Yeah. There's snacks and muffins and brownies and biscuits and junk in the fridge everywhere. And then you get these kind of, more established women who come in and see the disorder and the yeah, chaos. Yeah. It'll be easy for them to get offended at this other yeah. group, but instead they just realize, yeah, they went through some staffing transitions. Right. Yeah, this is kind of a mess. We're just going to clean it up. Yeah. But what can happen is... Well, and the volunteers they're dealing with are 14 versus the volunteers I'm dealing with are 54. Yeah. Or, like- <laughs> or like for us in our context, yeah. we do set up and tear down yeah. right now. And so some weeks, the kids' team... You forget stuff in the trailers takes longer right. than the production, production team. team. And so it could be easy to get bent out of shape because you see cars pulling out because right. they're done, but you're not done. Right. All those things have to be talked about. Yeah. Because if they're not talked about, it leads to bitterness. And bitterness does what? It grows up yeah. corrupting, corrupting many, many people. And if we if we refuse to deal with this interpersonal drama, difficulty, conflict stuff. It's going to spread yeah. and you're going to have a church full of people that yeah. there's a bunch of clicks and people all bent out of shape. Well, and you got to deal with it. And if they, and if you talk to somebody, they won't do it. Then they got, then, then they're allowed to go. Yeah. They they're are released to go on to their next decision making choices of life. <laughs> yeah. Well, but what you're saying is so true that as leaders, uh, as leaders of, of the church, we're also a reflection of Jesus. We're a yeah. reflection to the people that we're leading. And if we don't think that doesn't affect the way they lead their homes and their families and their friends, um, then we're, we're dead wrong. And so for me, something Aaron and I have said for a long time, um, as parents is that the more we talk to our kids, the more we talk to our kids, there's been small conflicts that we've had where we could have just rolled over and not dealt with it and just let it go. There's been plenty of times when our kids fought with each other that like, I'm tired. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm like, just get over it. But, but we've had to be intentional as parents to say, no, we're not going to let even small offenses grow. We're not going to let, um, small moments or missed opportunities. And so in our house, we say a lot of words. We talk to each other. Sometimes I don't want to hear their opinion or their thought. I don't want to hear what they're frustrated about. They don't want to hear what I'm frustrated about, but we're going to talk about it. And what we found is that the more we talk about it, the more that comfortable they are with talking about all of it and being willing to share with us the good, the bad, the ugly of their life, but also the relationship between my kids. I don't want them growing up one day and moving out of the house and never talking to each other again. This is the only opportunity I have to help them learn how to communicate with each other and to handle conflict. Brilliant. And if we're not teaching them at home how to, then they're going to get into a marriage that they can't handle conflict. Yes. And if we're not willing to teach our people, uh, our staff conflict in our churches, they're not going to be able to have conflict with their spouse and teach it to their people in their life group or whatever it is. It's an essential piece. I believe what you said, uh, in, in, uh, as you read that verse in Matthew five, that we as leaders have to mm-hmm. 
be responsible for that we are not able to say well i don't curse and i don't drink and i don't swear and i don't so run. i'm good yeah so i'm i'm good i'm whatever no no if you're not handling conflict you are directly in disobedience to yeah. who god's asked you to be as a christ follower have i done my conflict illustration on here with a knife before um i don't know do it anyway so uh i carry a pocket knife all the time and if you're just listening you can't see it. Maybe you can hear it again. Should I give it to him again? Yeah, do it into the microphone, but don't cut yourself. <laughs> I carry a pocket knife and a lot of people see a pocket knife as a weapon, right? Especially a, I carry a pretty serious knife. Yeah. And so it That's looks, pretty... it looks like a weapon, <laughs> Yeah. but I carry it as a tool. Yeah. It's a tool. It can cut a string, it can open a box. Um, there's a lot of things that I cut yeah. when needed. If people on our staff need a knife, they just come to my office Yeah. because they know that I've got one. And I think that what we can do is we can view conflict as a weapon right because somewhere in our life somebody used conflict as a weapon against us so we're afraid of conflict mm -hmm. but conflict a knife as a tool is very effective yeah and so like the reason that you're in the building that you're in if you're in a building is because somebody got a knife and put a whole bunch of them around a blade around a circle and right. called it a saw blade they're able to cut boards and cut metal and design things and the reason that we sit in these chairs and have this shirt is because somebody took two knives and made a pair of scissors right. that cut the arms of my shirt to sew it together right that's conflict yeah and so we have to shift how we view conflict as something that's bad right you've got to carry it in your pocket and so what you said about how you're the queen of conflict no you just got a knife in your pocket no right right you don't you don't look at it as a weapon now every once in a while somebody gets stabbed but that's because they refused to see it. Whitney is a doctor. They didn't see her as a doctor with a scalpel. They saw her as a thug coming right. to mug them because right. of pride. Right. No, right. Because of pride. And if you can just, the Bible says that words from a friend can be trusted. Right. Right. But, a, but an enemy multiplies kisses. And so when someone comes to you with conflict and they say, hey, I've got some scalpel work I got to cut out of you. That's when real surgery can oh, happen. Oh, it's really good. I think that. The other piece of that, as you pulled out your knife, I, I mean, you bought me a knife uh, seven almost years ago now. And the truth was when you first gave it to me, I was a little afraid of it because yeah. I had never carried a knife before. I had yeah. never used one. And it was a little bit like, oh, this is just a weapon. Oh, weird. <laughs> What? Weird. Why did this guy give me, buy right, me a right. knife as a gift? <laughs> right. No, no. I knew them. it had tons of meaning behind it. But yeah, but yeah it's a, it, it, it felt like a weapon at first when I carried it with me. Yeah. But now if I go to the airport, I have to literally, we went on a flight the other day and you said to me, you got your knife. Did you put it in the suitcase or like yeah. your check bag or you got it on your, because now it is a tool that I have with me at all times that you're thankful. That you've I'm got. super grateful for. And I now don't even see it as a weapon that I have yeah. to be reminded. Oh, I'm going on a flight. They're going to see it as a weapon. Right. And it's good. If you're afraid of conflict right now, that's okay. If you go into a conversation of conflict and you accidentally stab someone, it's okay. Yeah. Keep trying. Yeah. Don't be afraid um, because the more you use it, the more you'll use well, it. There may be blood. Oh, 100%. But blood doesn't mean death. No. Right. And so I think for me, what I learned with the knife uh, was that just keep using it. Just keep trying. Just yeah. figure out where it works and how it works and how you wield it best. Mm. I don't wield my knife the way you wield yours. Right. And you don't wield yours the way uh, I wield mine. But yet we both use them very effectively yeah. and very efficiently in the areas that we do. And so uh, everybody's going to look different. But those who are able to have conflict, the other part of it is if you want to be a valuable piece of the team, people who use conflict well are the most valuable people on the team. It's true. And so, yeah, go. If you're the leader. Yes. This is your responsibility. 100%. So, a lot of our audience are staff at other churches. Right. Or great Christian people that attend a church. Mm -hmm. And if you're an attender, a volunteer, uh, or on staff, and you've got some of these issues within your church, send your pastor this podcast. Yeah. Send the podcast. Send him a link. Write him a really nice email that says, hey, pastor, <laughs> I feel like there's an issue between so-and-so and me or so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so, or this department and this department. And I feel like it really needs to be dealt with. Can you help me or can we talk about that? Can we get coffee? Send him this podcast. Yeah. And pastor, if you receive this, our job is not just to smile on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And our job is not only 
to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. That's that's the calling. But there are sheep in our congregation, and we all know the oil on the head of the sheep keeps the flies out of the eye. Like there's ointment that we have to apply. Right. Every once in a while, a sheep has to get its leg broke and thrown over our shoulder so it can heal. Right. There's some responsibility that we have to help the culture of our church. Whitney is the greatest gift that God's given me in ministry. And if Aaron got real bent out of shape, even though he doesn't work here, it's my responsibility to get involved to help whatever happened with him. If he's involved in the men's department and the men's thing and something goes wrong and they no longer use Aaron and he doesn't want to come, he's mad at five guys, this has never happened. It's right. an analogy. I could say, well, Aaron needs to figure that out on himself. Well, if I want to value her and keep my team close, right. then I need to go and talk about that stuff. Yeah. And so like, let's not just be stage guys or stage ladies. I'm telling you a table of conversation yeah. is the thing that's going to grow your church because your team's going to get stronger. Yeah, it's really good. And last piece of that is do it with urgency. Do it with urgency. Don't put it off. Because uh, it's just going to grow and get worse and more people will die. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that sort of the, the, the low. Don't let a root of bitterness uh, grow because it corrupts many. And the bigger it grows, the more people it corrupts and the more quickly it gets out of hand. And, and so we're dealing with some of that right now. Yeah. hundred percent. We have had a couple issues yeah. that we didn't deal with. As quickly or as quickly maybe as, as maybe we've, as the Lord was telling us to, yeah. we trusted us more than his voice. Yeah. And now there's casualties Yeah. because yeah. we didn't. So yeah. the quicker you jump on it, the better. Yeah. That's good. Love y'all. That's uh, a heavy one. Those got, got kind know. of heavy at the end. You know, like, whoa, dang. But we love y'all. And the reason we talk about it is because we want to help. And so, uh, let us know how it's helping. Like you said, I think it's really good. If you know somebody that, even if it's just somebody that needs help in growing in conflict, send it to them because, um, man, there's so much goodness in healing. If yeah. you and I had not learned how to have healthy conflict with each other on the daily, we would not be able to do what God's called us to do. And yeah. so like my heart for y'all is that you can grow in this area of conflict because I do think it's one that over the, especially the last few years, the enemy's done a really good job of trying to shut down yeah. conversation and, and confrontation with each other. No, let's be people who are willing to see conflict as a tool. And I, I've had a lot of people reach out and tell me that they sent the podcast to their, over yeah. the year, all the ones we've done, sent it to their leader. And there's been a lot of cultural shift in churches yeah. because we're able to say whatever the junk we want right. <laughs> and then your pastor's not mad at you for it. Yeah, exactly. I love it. No, yeah. it's good. Love you guys. Love y'all. See ya.